word today. Um, as, uh, <laughs> I didn't know about your theme, <clears throat> the rise up and walk. It's a great theme. I suppose it goes hand in hand with my talk. Uh, the title of my talk was uh, The Hand of God. And um, to be able to rise up and walk, we need to take the hand of God to be able to be picked up, to be able to walk, I suppose. So praise the Lord. So um, I'm going to turn to Genesis and chapter chapter 1, please. Genesis and chapter 1 and verse 26. <clears throat> okay, and we'll start in verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth, all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So this is the sixth day, but I want to start in that first line of verse 26. It says, and God said, let us, let us. That's the one I want to, I want to point out is let us. This is plural for two. And we know that this is talking about God and Jesus together. That we know that Jesus Christ sits on the right hand of the Father. And um, we know you can read the in, in, in the book of John, it says, in the beginning was the Word. And we know that was Jesus. And the Word was with God. And that was Jesus again, with God. And the Word was God. And they are one. And... Uh, and we can see and it confirms that our Lord Jesus Christ was there from the very beginning with his father Jesus, in, in, in the beginning. And uh, if you read the whole word of God from Genesis to Revelations, it talks about <clears throat> this Jesus. Is Jesus the son of God? The whole gospel is all of Jesus. So we're going to go to uh, Exodus and chapter 3. Now we're going to talk about the children of Israel. Now, just a bit of background behind this story. This chapter three, the uh, children of Israel, the children of Israel are now in bondage to the Egyptians, and they've been in bondage and in slavery for four hundred years. That's a very long time. Four hundred years of slavery. Now, can you imagine the children of Israel, generations? of children were born into slavery. They know nothing else, but they are slaves to the Egyptians. There is no light at the end of the tunnel for them. There is no future for them because they are all slaves. Okay. Now God hears the cries of the children of Israel. And he appears to Moses in a burning bush. And he directs and instructs Moses that he is the man that he is going to use, that God is going to use to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. So we'll start in verse 13. And Moses says, in chapter 3, verse 13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto, the, and say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you, and this is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. So God is making it very clear to Moses. You will stand before this Pharaoh of Egypt and you tell them exactly who I am. I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. And I'm the God of Jacob. Okay. And uh, so we'll go to uh, Exodus and chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4 and verse, uh, uh, sorry, Exodus chapter, ooh, where are we? Yeah, Exodus chapter 4 and verse um, 
one. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor will they hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord have not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is in thy hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it onto the ground. And he cast it onto the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand. So I'm circling the word hand, okay? Uh, put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and he caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord God of the fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of, A God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have appeared unto thee. And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, Put now forth thine hand to thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again into flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. We'll go to verse 17. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. So the Lord God has instructed Moses to put thy, this rod, thy rod, in thine hand. And we, like I said, the title of the talk is the hand of God. And this rod demonstrated strength. This, demo, this rod demonstrated authority. The rod demonstrated might. And the rod demonstrated power. And, and it was God's authority that God gave Moses to go into the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and and tell him to let thy people go. And we read the story, and uh, the Egyptians paid a high price for disobeying God. They were they were they were cursed with ten plagues, and the last plague was the most horrific, where the firstborn of all Egyptians, whether they be the children, whether they be the slaves, whether they be the cattle were to die with the angel of death, okay? And this was the authority, the hand of God, that God had gave to Moses. And brothers and sisters, this rod, this authority that God gave, as we read in the beginning, that Jesus was there from the very beginning. And when Jesus was on the earth, Jesus was that living word. And Jesus was the authority on the earth. Okay, And God now, brothers and sisters, has filled us with his Holy Spirit. And now he's given us that same authority through his living word, the Bible. And that authority, that power is given us to us, brothers and sisters, that now we can go forth and preach his gospel, the same authority. And this is God's mighty hand upon us, brothers and sisters. All right, I'll give you some quotes in First Kings, in First Kings and chapter. Just quoting, you don't have to turn to it. In First Kings and chapter eighteen and verse forty-six, Elijah, and this is Elijah, and the hand of the Lord was with Elijah. In Second Kings and chapter three, verse fifteen, this is Elisha, and the hand of the Lord came upon him. In Job. This is Job in chapter 12, verse 10. In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. In 2 Samuel, chapter 24, verse 14. This is David. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord. In Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 17. Isaiah, for the Lord thy God will hold thy hand, right hand, saying, Unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. In the book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 6, for the hand of the Lord was upon him. 
the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 18, and the hand of my God, which was good upon me. So you can see, brothers and sisters, that God's hand has been with all his children. His God hands has always been there to deliver his people. God's hand is also with us, brothers and sisters, even more so. God says that he has filled us with his Holy Spirit. God says that now we are a royal priesthood, a peculiar people in a foreign land, a holy nation. And God's hand, brothers and sisters, is in our lives. His promises are young and I'm in for us. His promises that he says that I will never leave you and I never will ever forsake thee. This rod, this rod that demonstrated power that God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt was the children of Israel witnessed so many things, so many things. They witnessed the seas that parted, okay? They witnessed the manna that fell from heaven. They witnessed the, the, the almighty uh, fire by night and the cloud by day, where the cloud by day, that God was in front of that cloud and he led the children of Israel. And this pillar of fire, can you imagine this pillar? A pillar is a big, straight pillar, a round volume of fire that stood behind them and protected them. And this is, brothers and sisters, this is the Holy Spirit, this cloud that leads us, brothers and sisters. And these children of Israel, they witnessed all of this. They witnessed the mighty hand that led them through Egypt, out of Egypt, and delivered them from 400 years of bondage and rescued them and took them across the river, the Red Sea, and uh, took them towards the promised land. And brothers and sisters, the same is with us. God's hand was that we were slaves as well to this world. Okay? We were slaves to Egypt. And we had no hope. We had no future. We had nothing. And God delivered us. And we went through the waters of baptism as they went through the Red Sea. And he took us out the other end of the Red Sea. And we come out of the waters of baptism. And now he's given us our new life too, brothers and sisters. And he's blessed us, and his hand is upon us. Okay. Uh, Exodus 15. Exodus chapter 15. And we'll read uh, verse 2. Exodus 15, verse 2. The Lord is my strength. Now, this is a song that Moses wrote glorifying God. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts have he cast into the sea. He has chosen captains, are also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank unto the bottom of the stone, as a stone. Thy right hand, here it is again, brothers and sisters. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, have dashed in the pieces the enemy. This is God's authority, brothers and sisters. This is God's power. In, in verse 7, and in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou hast set us forth thy wrath, which consumed them and stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as a heap, and the depths were congealed in the hearts of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue and I will overtake. I will divide thy spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Um, so 
again, verse 12, thou stretchest out thy right hand and the earth swallowed them. You see the wonderful power of God is promised to his people that his, his, his right hand, his hand is there to deliver us. And brothers and sisters, who is God's right hand? It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ that sits on the right hand of the Father. Okay, we'll turn to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53. Okay, In verse uh, 1, Who hath believed our report, and to, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground, and he have no form of comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And this is uh, God prophesying about his son, Jesus Christ, that sits on the right hand of him. He is despised and is rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid and he, we hid and he's, our faces from him. And it was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he have borne our griefs, which is our sicknesses, and carried our sorrows, our pains, which is our pains. Yet we did not esteem him, and he stricken, and he smitten of God, and he was afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, which is sins. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We'll go to verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord, to bruise him, and he had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasures of the Lord shall prosper. Where? Where does it prosper? In his hand. In his hand. you got our almighty God, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the King of the, the, the almighty God that created the heavens and the earth. And his son sits on the right hand of him and he sends him to earth, to, to, to us, brothers and sisters, sisters. And he makes him, he bears, bears our sin upon him. He He's despised and he's rejected. He takes the sin of curse upon him for us. He took your sins upon that tree. He took your death your, your, and he paid the price for you. This is the wonderful hand of God, the wonderful creator, that he allowed this to happen, that he allowed his son Jesus to, that sat on the right hand to come to this earth for us brothers and sisters, that his son came to this earth and did his will, that he loved us with a great love, that he saw us afar off, brothers and sisters, that we were once sinners, and yet he still loved us and he died for us. That we just took communion to remember this bread and this grape juice that represents his, his, his body that was broken for us. And this grape juice that represents his spilt blood. And we were able to commune at the same table with him through his Holy Spirit. Do you see the wonderful hand of God, brothers and sisters? Do you see this wonderful hand of God that we are part of this wonderful plan? That he allowed this to happen. This great love that God has, has for us. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Verse uh, 53. Okay, verse 53. And then Peter followed him afar off in, into the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witnesses against him, but their witnesses agreed together. And there arose certain and bear false witnesses against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy the temple that is made with hands, 
And within three days, I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witnesses agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses against thee? But he held his peace, and he answered nothing again. And the high priest asked him, and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the, the, the Son of Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and the coming in close clouds of heavens. Then the high priest rent their clothes and saith, What need we further witness? Ye have heard this blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him and say unto him, Prophesy of the, the servants. Did they strike him with the palms of their hands? So Jesus proclaimed that he was the right, that he is the son of God, that he sits on the right hand of the father. And they, they cursed him. And they, they blasphemed him. They humiliated him. They slapped him in the face. They spat in his face. They put a crown on the of thorns upon our Savior's head. The Son of God that sits on the right hand of the Father. They put a crown of horns, thorns on his head. And then they crucified him. For you, brothers and sisters. For me. That we may be able to stand in his kingdom that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And Jesus Christ allowed this to happen. And this was the hand of God in all of this. Okay. Uh, we'll go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. And... Uh, in verse 54. Now, Stephen has just become a, a disciple of the Lord. And he uh, he is rebuking the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they rejected our, their, the Lord Jesus Christ and they crucified him. And we'll read in verse 54. And when they heard these things, they were cut to their hearts, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full, is the say, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, "Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God." And then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped with their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and they cast him out to the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul, which we know becomes an apostle, which is Paul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down, and he cried with a loud voice, and Lord, lay not this sin upon their charge, and when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now, two things happened here. Two amazing, powerful things happened here. One, the last thing, the last thing Stephen saw was Jesus look, stand, standing on the right hand of the saw Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. And the second thing, he said, Lord, lay not this sin upon their charge. He forgave them. Because brothers and sisters, he had spiritual eyes. And the Lord filled him with the Holy Spirit. And it's the same with us, brothers and sisters, that God has filled us with his Holy Spirit. And he has given us now the spiritual eyes to see that we have meekness that we have love, that we have compassion, that we can understand our calling, that our calling on this earth is only for a moment. 
But the calling to come, when our Lord Jesus Christ returns, he promises that when that trumpet shall sound, that we shall stand on the right hand of the Father. Do you see the vision Stephen had? Do you see the vision that we should have, brothers and sisters? We are blessed. Ephesians uh, chapter 1 and verse 17. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. <clears throat> the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Remember what we just said? We just spoke about Stephen, how his eyes saw the glory and saw Jesus Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father. And this is the same, brothers and sisters, that we hope of, of his calling, that we see the riches of his inheritance. And verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? And set him at his uh, at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in the world but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things through the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that. Fill us all in all. So our Lord Jesus Christ at the end of verse 20 says that he sits on the, the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities, far above more power and might and dominion on every name. The greatest privilege that our Lord, that he sits on the right hand of his Father. Nothing greater than this. And God says that he's given us the spiritual eyes to see this wonderful thing. This wonderful understanding. That he says this privilege is far above principalities, power, might and dominion. Above every name. And Jesus promises and says to us, if we overcome, that he'll leave our names in the Lamb's book of life. That we will sit on the right hand of the Father. What a promise. What a blessing, brothers and sisters. Psalms 118. Psalms chapter 118, verse 14. And verse 14. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is the tabernacles of the righteous. Thy right hand of the Lord doth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doth valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord hath chastened me sore. But he hath not given me unto death. Open to me the gates of the righteousness. I will go into I will go into them. I will praise the Lord, the gate of the Lord. Who's the gate? Who is the gate? The gate is Jesus Christ. The gate of the Lord into which the righteousness shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The stone which thou buildest refused. Who's the stone? Who's the rock? Jesus Christ is the rock. The stone which the builders refuse is become the head stone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I 
a beseechy, send their prosperity. Blessed be that thou cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord which have showed us light. Uh, bind the sacrifice with cords even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God and I will praise thee. Thou art my God and I will exalt thee. I will give thanks unto the, the Lord. He is good for his mercy endure forever. Our Lord God is so good, brothers and sisters. Our Lord God is so faithful and he is so worthy to be praised. He has blessed us. He has put us in high places. When we have our trials and our tribulations, when things come against us, you remember one thing, God's hand is with you. God's hand will deliver you. When Joshua went and sent went in and uh to for the walls of Jericho the people in the in the walls behind in the walls they knew the reputation of God that went before the children of Israel they knew that they were doomed before the walls even went down this is your God that stands before you he is your God that would deliver you his right hand it says his right hand is valiantly his right hand uh, doth, will be there to pick you up. Okay. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And verse uh, uh, 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us to meet, be partakers of his inheritance of the saints. Verse 13 who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image and the invisible God, the firstborn and every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, the visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities, or powers or things were to create all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Whether it be thrones or principalities, brothers and sisters, everything consists because God's hand allows it to. Everything consists because God's hand is in it, and before it and after it, the beginning and Gonna keep moving. We'll go to Mark. Uh, uh, we'll go to Mark in chapter sixteen. Mark sixteen. And verse um, fifteen. And he said unto them, "So, okay, just a bit of background. Jesus now has been, he has been killed." And he has now, he's on the third day, he has been resurrected. And he, okay. And now he's gone to, uh, to, uh, to his 11 disciples. Okay. Before he's glorified into heaven. And we'll read in verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but that he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up any serpent, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Verse 19, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and he sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, and they preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. And confirming the word and with signs following, amen. So our Lord Jesus Christ finished speaking to his 11 disciples. Our Lord did his part. He came to the earth. He died for our sins and our sicknesses. He established the church amongst the 11 disciples. Okay. And now he was glorified. Now look at the excitement of the people. They went forward to preach the word of God. And brothers and sisters, and those 11 
became 12 and etc. They did their pit. And now they sleep and waiting for the Lord's return. Now it's up to us. God has given us his Holy Spirit. And it's our turn to do our commission. The will that God has given us. of the Father, and we are being his, his servants. We are being faithful children. The same desire as these 11 had as well. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Wherefore seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin with, which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. As the same as the disciples were given their commission, the Lord is saying, we have a race to run now. And he says to run it with patience. That is set before us. It's a journey that we have to endure. And on that journey, brothers and sisters, we will come across uh, potholes and we'll come across hurdles and we will come across tribulation and trials and we will come across offenses and all these things will come before us. But the Lord Jesus says, run with patience this race. Because our Lord Jesus Christ sits on the right hand of the Father and he watches us. Verse 2, looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us, he endured the cross, despising shame, and he sat down and sits on the right hand of the throne of God. Okay, brothers and sisters, so he, again, it, it's confirming that our Lord Jesus Christ sits on the right hand of the Father, but in all of it, our God Almighty has his hand upon us and he guides us and he nurtures us. Revelations, we'll finish off in Revelations chapter 3. Revelations chapter 3. Now this is uh, Paul is sent, uh, as we know, uh, Paul, sorry, my apologies, John is exiled to an island called Patmos and he was given the, I suppose, the, the privilege to write the book of Revelations. And uh, we'll read in chapter 3 of Revelation chapter 3 and verse, verse 5. He that overcometh the same shall be, be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess him his name before my father and before his angels. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This is pretty amazing, brothers and sisters. He that overcometh shall be clothed in. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. And I will confess his name before the Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ sits on. On, on, the, on the right hand of the Father, on the throne. And the promises, brothers and sisters, if we endure, if we overcome and believe the promises that God's hand is every day in our lives, that he shelters us, that he protects us, that he guides us, that he leads us with authority, that he leads us with power, that he leads us with might, that he leads us with strength, we will overcome. And when we overcome, he says, our names are written in the book of life. And when that, when that trumpet shall sound, he says, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. In a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. of heaven that we will stand and sit on the right hand of the father and all the people said amen